Look, if you are waking up every day without a mission, without something to work on, without that fire in your belly, if every single day of your life is time to blend in with each other because they all look the same, if you feel like you've lost yourself, then this video is for you. You probably don't have your life purpose, but we're gonna figure it out right now. When I was 15, I was in math class with my best friend. Now our teacher, Mr. Nazim, came back when he was giving us our reports for our assignments. And he looked at us, right? He came up to us, he's like, you boys are really good at math. You two should become hedge fund managers, maybe engineers, make a lot of money. So us being young and impressionable, we didn't want to be hedge fund managers because we didn't want to cut hedges. That's what we thought hedge fund managers did, cut hedges and manage hedges. So engineer was the next best course of action. So for the next several years, we studied physics, we studied chemistry, we studied advanced mathematics. We studied all the right things we needed to do to become engineers. And I got good grades, right? Because I forced myself to get good grades. I worked really hard for it. And I got into engineering class or engineering school at university. So during my time in university, we're doing lots of different subjects, lots of different assignments, learning about engineering, but I couldn't feel like myself. You see, I realized early on that my brain was not made for this. Not that I couldn't do it, I could do the assignments, I could do everything, just I didn't care for it. My brain wasn't a logical mind, it wasn't a uh, handyman mind, it, wasn't, it didn't think in a linear fashion. You see, I have a creative brain that goes all over the place. It doesn't have that traditional structure and you need that traditional structure for engineering. Meanwhile, my little cousin, he's about 10 years old. He would come up to me and talk about four stroke engines. He would talk about planes and how things work and he would build things out of Lego. I'll be looking at this kid and I'll say to myself, that is the engineer. This kid's got the natural passion for it. He's already doing it without anyone telling him to do it. That is the person I want designing my bridges. That's the person I want designing my car engines. Not someone who's not passionate about it. Not someone who's not ambitious about it. Then I thought back to my life. When I used to go to parties with friends, I was the go-to guy for advice. People would come to me if they had problems with their girlfriends, if they had problems with their workplace. And they would like my advice because I was able to see it from their perspective, see it from a different context, perhaps the boss's perspective, and give them guidance in regards to what they should do next and how they can overcome the situation. So it's always this consultant type figure, always this teacher type figure. Regardless of the situation, I had a great deal of empathy and could put myself in someone else's shoes. So that's how the realized man got born. Now, when I was doing the stuff with the realized man, I felt completely different to when I was doing my engineering degree. No one had to force me to read. In engineering, I had to force myself to read these mechanical textbooks about statics and dynamics. That shit was boring. With the realized man, I read on my own volition. It felt innate. I wanted to do it. Stoicism, neuro-linguistic programming, cognitive behavioral therapy, all this stuff excited me. Philosophy, it made me feel good reading this stuff. I didn't have to push myself, it just happened. So that's the first thing you have to understand when it comes to finding your life purpose. If you are in a job, right, and you did it out of perhaps maybe your parents told you to study a degree to get that job, or you feel like to, for your ego to accept you, you need that job because you're this type of person. I'm a dentist. You know, I have to stay as a dentist because I'm a dentist. My ego revolves around this identity. Or some other ulterior motive and you feel like it's very mechanical, chances are that's not your life purpose. The sad reality is that is the truth for about 99% of the population on planet Earth. Because of our schooling system, because of how society is formed, people just go to whatever. There's not much thought put into where we should work and where we can serve at our best at. So how do you find your life purpose? How do you find the thing 
that doesn't need someone to push you for you to do. The thing that just comes out of you, the thing that you can excel at. Well, I want you to look back into your past because your past often has a lot of secrets, has a lot of evidence that can support you in the present. I want you to think about a time when you did an activity and you spent countless of hours doing it. And the time just moved and you lost yourself in this activity and people had to pull you away from it, right? So maybe it was a piece of art that you're working on. Maybe it was something that you're building with your dad. Maybe it was some graphic design thing, project that you worked on, or some programming thing that you worked on. Whatever it is, think about that time, and that's gonna give you a hint in regards to where you are gonna be best at in this world, where your life purpose is gonna be the best. So a lot of us, we have things that we enjoy. Let's say video games, right? Maybe the thing that you enjoy is video games, and you enjoyed spending lots of times, you know, just playing with friends, Dig deeper, what exactly or what element of video games did you like? Was it managing teams? Was it building things? Was it being creative? You see, when I was younger, I also enjoyed my fair share of video games. I liked creating things. I liked thinking outside the box, doing things that other people hadn't do. And those skills, funny enough, transitioned very well to becoming an entrepreneur. So I morphed these things that I found in my past, the ability to have conversations with people, the ability to consult and have that empathy with this natural entrepreneurship tendency. And voila, I found my life purpose, this channel, this movement. You can do the same. And you will know when it's right because no one's going to force you to do it. So think back, what was it that you did? Was it art? Was it some multimedia project? The next question is, yeah, I had this thing. I enjoyed doing it, it was fun, but I can't do it. I, that's not gonna pay the bills. But that's not right. Almost anything you can think of, there is an avenue for you to make a successful business from. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about in my new course, The Realized Entrepreneur. I'll be telling you guys about that soon. But you can leverage a lot of these skills that you have, a lot of these passions you have. You just need to think a little bit differently. And you can do it in such a way so that whatever that thing is, that can both be your life purpose, something that you have that natural drive for, something that you want to excel at, and it can also pay the bills. So that's the best case scenario. So when thinking about your life purpose, just think about that. Go back to your past, find that thing that you got excited for, that no one had to tell you to get excited for, and then move outwards. Think about how you can incorporate the skills associated with that in a job or in the business or on a project. That's how I did it, and I hope that my example motivates you. Do this, and I promise you, you'll be one step closer to living and dying well. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell notifications so we can see more of each other. Until next time.